So the exotic lips that were released have had a medical reception in terms of how good they are. On paper, they sound really good and simple for players, but in use, they don't really offer a lot. Edge of Intent is partly in that area as it can be effective, but at the same time, why would you want to use it if you have Devourer or another exotic that can heal you even more faster? Now, we don't need to worry so much around this area as the exotic glaive will be getting looked at next season, but for those that want to give Edge of Intent a try, then I have a build that you can implement and use up to master content, and this includes Roy Frequent abilities to your liking as well. But you know what else is going to get buffed next season? This channel right here, so if you enjoy my content then please leave a like, a sub and turn on your notifications as I would really appreciate it. So for the subclass, we'll be using Cataclysm as it provides the most amount of damage in one go via super use, although this can be swapped out if you like. My idea for the build is to create a sort of paladin based loadout that can do a hefty amount of damage when needed, but will heal others via passive means such as using your rift. Now the rift usage is going to be tied down to the boots of the assembler we are maining, as it will offer our allies health via the healing seekers or empowering abilities via empowering rift. Combining this with Edge of Intent allows us to have two forms of constant healing available in the most intense fights, and if planned out correctly, you can outheal a Ogre's Eye Blast with just the two, although I recommend you don't try this. So for the subclass itself, we will need to focus on self-preservation and damage as the gear being used is the easy part. Aspects we have Feed the Void where defeating combatants with Void abilities activates Devour for a constant health region. We then have Child of the Old Gods which allows us to shoot out a Void Soul after using our Rift that will drain the combatant's health, debuff, suppress and grant us ability energy back. For Fragments we have Echo of Remnants which increases the duration of grenades, Echo of Exclusion which allows our Void Final Blows to cause a Void Detonation, Echo of Undermining which allows our grenades to weaken by 15% and Echo of Reprisal where being surrounded by combatants and getting kills will net you more super energy back. Next for stats, we have 18 Recovery, 16 Discipline and 16 Intellect. The main stat here will be Recovery, so be sure to invest in this area as high as you can or use mods to further support its growth. For mods we have Elemental Light which allows us to create Elemental Well and Super Kills, Bountiful Well for an extra Elemental Well created, Seeking Wells so that our Wells will track to us, Elemental Ordnance that allows our grenades to create Wells and Font of Wisdom for a plus 15 Intellect stat. A very simple setup that anyone can achieve with or without the same gear being used. We are going to focus on support as our main build as this is something that has mainly been limited down to military solo warlock. The impression I'm trying to give you is to allow players to play a certain role in the game with as much depth as possible to it so it doesn't feel like a copy paste of a common build we're already familiar with. I don't expect this to be groundbreaking or next endgame build worthy but I do expect people to see his worth and see how fun it can be with constantly healing others. Now to make the build even more effective, you'll need some good weapons to back it up. Primary wise, we have the Chroma Rush with Feed and Frenzy and Wellspring, and this is still my most favourite AR to use to this very day because of how deadly accurate it is. Not only that, but as it's a 720 RPM, it can chew through health rather quickly and stun pretty effectively if you land your shots. It honestly feels more like an exotic once you get it working, as once Feed and Frenzy kicks in, it becomes a lot harder to put it down. Also, Wellspring on this weapon is also really great because of how the weapon works, so you can be generating energy back quickly through kills. Now I know not a lot of people would have gotten this weapon, or this weapon raw in general, so I do recommend you get the Healing Confusion Pulse Rifle with Demolitionist Perk. This will help out a lot with building up your grenade energy quickly and over time, and if not, just look for primary that can roll with Wellspring and Demo if there's available. For our second dream, we have the Edge of Intent Glaive which I have been trying to grind for ages for and finally got it. It's just your standard glaive with the ability to create a healing turret that will benefit everyone near it. Think of it like the Boots of the Assembler, but you can place it anywhere you like and not need to be near it to activate it. Its function is very simple and probably the only one out of the three to have some sort of purpose when it comes to benefiting from it. Although this is kind of it for the glaive and why so many people tend to leave them out as that's all they offer. Still, it has its purpose and adding on the suppressing glaive mod also makes it a bit more viable instead of being a stationary weapon to use. For heavy, we have the cataclysmic linear fusion with bait and switch as its main perk 
and this one perk will offer users a 35% damage buff for 10 seconds once active on the weapon. As Vorpal has been nerfed on the Nears and heavies in general, with the following on the fusion, this perk is the next best thing in terms of damage as it's easy to proc and can allow you to do some hefty damage against bosses with his large crit spots. This is the one raid weapon that I highly recommend everyone try and go ahead and get as we don't know if the Park or Deconstruction mod will make a return in the future. But even if it doesn't make a return, the damage it pulls off is nothing to laugh at. For the stats, we have already established that recovery will be our biggest focus on the build so that we can easily proc healing buffs for all, then have our Exotic Glaive and Exotic Perk in reserve. As we have our stat at 80, this should be a good level to reach if you don't have the ability to get it at 100 straight away. And on top of that, you can rely on the walls being made to benefit you greatly as this can replenish your lost ability energy straight away. I also recommend you add on the Absolution perk as this will reduce all our abilities cooldown via all the powers collected. You'll also want to have the Kinetic Cypher mod on so you can do this constantly as well. And with that, you'll also probably want to go ahead and add on the Utility Kickstart mod as it's a must as this one mod will give you around a quarter of class ability energy back just from using your Rift. This may be small first, but once you have the Child of the Old Gods, Wellspring, Wells and Absolution kicking in, it will vastly reduce the needed cooldown for you activating your Rift once again. Your Discipline will also benefit from the effects of your Rift, as like I mentioned, Child of the Old Gods, Wells and Absolution will grant you energy back as you play along. I do recommend you add on the Ashes to Ashes mod so you can get back super energy fast as well, as this can be used to proc Elemental Light and Front of Wisdom once you are depleted. Now, talking about Font of Wisdom, as my Intellator is at 60, it's probably wise to not have the following mod attached, as the two combined will give me a new stat of 110. This isn't bad, as that extra 10 won't benefit as much anyways, but at the same time, if you can avoid it, then do try, unless your armor is in the way. If you have the naturally high intellect stat anyways, then you can swap out the mod for something like Well of Tenacity or Font of Might, but just remember that for Font of Might to work, you'll need a Void Weapon or a Weapon with Osmosis to help. Left over wise, we have the Suppression Glaive mod that allows us to suppress and stun the bands via our Glaives alone, a very powerful mod that can make using a Glaive fun and safe to use for in-game. Now that should cover the idea as to how I put my build together, so here's a condensed list of the mods we are using. For Head, we have Resilience, Ashes to Ashes, Connect Siphon, the Elemental Light mod. Arm, we have Discipline, Fastborn, Battle for Worlds mod. Chest we have Discipline, Cacus of Dampner, Thermal Shot Plating and Seeking Worlds mod. Leg we have Recovery, Absolution and Elemental Ordnance mod. Bond we have Maya Discipline, Suppressing Glaive, Utility Kickstart and Vontal Wisdom mod. The Edge of Intent and Boost of the Assembler combo have been an interesting setup when leaning into the fantasy support build playstyle. I, like many others, like to replicate RPG classes as best as possible and even though this isn't always available, we can do what we can and see what interesting takes are created. With the following setup, you can become a paladin, a priest, a healer or whatever you like and still be just as effective in PvE like normal. Upon use, you'll be getting the ability to constantly heal around the clock while also dishing out high damage as you please. Both of the healing effects can be propped at the same time and allow you and your team to outlive whatever is hitting you. A child of the old gods will help you get your abilities back quickly so you'll never need to worry about having to wait around and it's great for Legend to Master tier content if you're running with friends or someone who's new to the game. And also remember that we can swap out rips for the empowering version instead, so while your team can benefit from healing turret, they can also get a damage buff as well, allowing you to truly support your team through every possible method. Now just to be clear, this build won't keep your team alive through everything, and as you can see, most players no matter how much protection you give, will still find a way to die. And this isn't so bad as the build is doing what it can and as shown, it's doing a really good job of it. I think when playing with this setup, you have to think to yourself where in the game would this sword build benefit the most, as Void 3.0 has allowed using the Devour perk more easily accessible. Running a Legend or Master Nightfall, I can see this build working out really well as the balance of difficulty isn't as bad compared to using this in GMs as an example. Legend Cyber's missions, from my experience, has always been a mix with players, knowing what to do and many not knowing what to do. The boss room tends to catch players out the most and that's where this sort of build can easily fit in and help the team survive, as long as everyone is on point. 
Now, of course, I haven't tried this in GM, but I can tell you it won't work because of how quickly you'll die within a few shots, and now you have to take things much slower in this type of content. If they made it so that staying near the exotic glaive user increases health regen speed and damage while getting kills, then this could make the exception. Nonetheless, the build has its usage and is fun to mess around with when playing mid to end game content. Once we get the glaze buffed and see what new mods are made available, we can revisit this again and see how this fares out. But I have enjoyed the build for what it's worth, and if you like simple fun, then why not try and give this build your two cents no matter. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications. Also, follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny news and content. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one.